ahead, right to this section of the video right here. Individual, the CEO of Catalyst Dispensary, said, you know what? No. I'm not going to leave the answers in the hands of some news publication. I'm going to get to the bottom of it myself. Decided he would then take the top name brands of everyone named in that article and would have those independently tested for pesticides on his own dollar. Check this out. Catalyst is going to start testing our own shelf randomly. Yes, we are going to spend the money to make sure that everything that we're carrying is clean and test free of pesticides and other contaminants and we are going to give it to trusted labs to make sure that is the case and if you pop dirty you're banned that's it i don't give a fuck who you are right and at the end of the day look this is a hopefully a teachable moment for everybody but we can't be selling fucking dirty product now to be clear we've never had anything test dirty on our shelf never had a recall batch that was on our shelf we have no knowledge of anything that ever tested dirty on ourselves. that's it we need to make sure if we're all about the customer and we're trying to do the right thing, then what we carry is safe. So look, this is a fucking message to every single brand out there. I don't give a fuck what new SOP you need to do to make sure that you hit our shelf clean. But at the end of the day, we're going to do our own fucking testing because we know the DCC, despite the $135 million in licensing fees, is trash and is not going to clean this up. And I can only speak for Catalyst, but our mother shelf is going to be clean and we're going to enforce ourselves. and although we're short on resources we're going to use resources to make sure that everything we carry is clean i hope the rest of the industry follows suit again only the private sector so ever solve the problem in this industry that aside it's super important to me when we put the catalyst name on it that the consumers can come in and know that it's safe and clean product and the brands better can get it together again the past is the past. I'm not going to guess the chain of custody and relitigate all that. Everybody gets one fucking mulligan. But here forward, we will be fucking testing. And if you pop dirty, we're going to fucking ban you. And if you pop super dirty, you're fucking banned for life, and we're going to fucking blast you. That's it, man. We're all about the customer. We're here to protect them. That's our fucking duty. Our fucking name's on it. That's the SOP going forward. All brands, you're all put on notice. We ain't trying to fucking over-police the industry. But come on, bro. Bring your plot again clean. It's not really random. It's all our best sellers and anybody that was in that article. We will let the test speak for itself. But you got my word as the CEO of this company. Anything that has a catalyst name on it, it'll be clean. Mother thanks for the people. So Elliot Lewis. Yeah, Elliot Lewis, um, he goes over the uh the the problem very well, gives a lot of context. I love his passion. Um, basically, uh, I believe pretty much the same thing, which is why I wanted to talk about it. Um, Elliot Lewis going around, he wants a pure product, a healthy product for the people that does not have pesticides. Now, if you haven't seen and you don't catch up with uh, Goblin 420, he also did a great video on this and I recommend you go check it out. But Goblin 420, uh, he was looking at Los Angeles weed, which is where a lot of this stuff is sprouting out. And that's going to be... Uh, pretty relevant in a minute. Why exactly, why specifically Los Angeles when um, it could have something to do with it being one of the biggest cannabis distributors currently? And it also could just have to do with population density, why it's being focused there, simply because there's more people, therefore more people smoking weed. And I think that more people need to make a clear stand um, and a public standing that their stuff is getting tested randomly and that they're coming up clean and that they're going to make sure it happens. And that's going to be very important in a minute when we get through a little bit more of this video. CEO of Catalyst took all the best brands named in the LA article and decided that he was going to get them tested. Makes up a very good point in regards to why he's doing the testing, but his reasoning, it makes perfect sense. Weed, for the people, by the people. If the government won't do these regulatory tests, he will, and I respect that. Surprisingly enough, as someone who comes from Canada, I actually couldn't believe at how fast the testing took place. We have the results, and might not be what you think. I'm very happy everybody, uh, you know, that seems to clean, be for me. and they yeah, passed. I don't know what's going on. I'm relieved, to be honest with you. We didn't want to find uh, anybody dirty out there, but. You know, patients always come first. I, I want to thank 
uh, Nate, for moving so quick on it and for chiming in on, on this live. And, uh, look, we'll continue down this road. I'm getting educated. They all tested clean. This brings a lot of questions into the LA Times article and where they got their material for testing. Through their own words, they took material from legal dispensaries, had it sent off to their own testing labs, and then found that each and just about every cart product had contaminants of pesticides. Well, one dispensary owner takes all of these same named carts, gets them tested, and finds no abundance of contamination, or none for that matter. So then I pose the question, who is lying? And if nobody's lying, where did these test results come from that suggest there's a contamination of pesticides in legal? Okay, so up to this point, um, we're only hearing the dispo side. And I have a theory that could have to do with why we're getting different testing results. Why exactly could this have changed? Or if it didn't change, why is it coming up different? So I want to tackle the first question first, and then the second question a little bit later. But why could it have changed? Why is it possible that it's different? Well, we're in an industry where people are looking for max profit for the lowest amount of effort. We have a green rush, and whether you want to admit it or not, we're still in that area. We're still in the era of cannabis legalization where we're not federally legal, but you can sell by state. Why that's important is that we have no real federal um, enforcement when it comes to what we can use. And that takes a lot of the seriousness away from actually setting up a business that works. And one of the things that could have happened in my mind is that we have a cannabis business. Let's say we're, we're we, Weed Inc. We'll just call it Weed Inc. So you open Weed Inc. and you're a big dispensary and you have all these taxes, all these bills. I mean, you're opening a building, which you have to pay rent on, on land that you have to pay taxes on, uh, on and inside you have a grow room potentially that you have to fund, not only paying the electric bill and the water bill, but you also have to pay for the nutrients, the, the pH uh, chemicals, the purification methods, everything you have to pay for adding to your overhead, not to mention the employees and the benefits, everything that comes with that. Uh, this is why I don't usually buy carts regardless, uh, dispo or plug, it doesn't matter. Uh, they just always test hot for contaminants anytime they're heavily studied in mass. Um, I know certain brands have really high standards but the bulk is crappy quality. Uh, I'd rather just smoke flour. I love homegrown flour. Uh, it's my favorite thing to smoke. Um, but back to what I was saying is, if you're paying all this overhead, it's a huge risk to your bottom line and your profits. And that is something that is on the, the red radar for every CEO and business manager. So what do you do to maximize your profits? You have to ensure that it's not going to get taken out by something that is either a bug or, or a mold or something like that. So adding these poisons to your plants is going to increase the probability of you being able to harvest that plant, whether it's in good standing or not. So what could be happening is in between the testing that had, that had um, heavy pesticides, they could have changed management to people who were getting out of the green rush and said, this isn't worth it. I'm not making profits. Um, and that's something that's also happening in the esports industry right now is a lot of people are pulling out because it's not profitable. And um, they'll pull out because it's not profitable, sell the business to someone else. It goes under different management and they are a lot more ethical and a lot more healthy. Then they do the testing again. It tests for no pesticides. That's one theory that could possibly maybe allegedly be happening. And I have no knowledge to back that up. It's just a theory. I have no idea. I've never looked into the owners of these businesses. But if you're sampling a lot of businesses, there's a lot of factors that can go into play. And that's just one of them. Product. I mentioned this on Wednesday when I did the live show that to me, there are a number of people that benefit 
from an article that states that you can't rely or have faith in the legal system. People were thinking, well, the L.A. Times is a bunch of leftist folks that uh, w would have no need to push this kind of narrative. Well, who's paying the L.A. Times? Who's paying for these kind of articles? Who's paying for a hit piece to be done on the legal cannabis sector so that they could benefit? Well, I can name a few. You've got pharma. You've got tobacco. You've got alcohol. You've got anti-cannabis law uh, uh, advocates. The All of these people and entities would benefit from the LA Times. Well, as a matter of fact, currently, as of February 7th, 2018, Tribune Publishing, formerly Tronk Inc., agreed to sell the LA Times and its two other Southern California newspapers, the San Diego Union Tribune and the HOY, Ahoy, to billionaire biotech investor Patrick Soon Xiong. Who is Patrick Soon Xiong? Let's just take a quick look, shall we? Patrick Soon Xiong is a South African American business investor, medical researcher, philanthropist, and transplant surgeon. He is the inventor of the drug Embraxin. Hmm, pharmaceuticals. Imagine that. So I don't have to go very far to see who benefits from defaming a plant that heals people rather than contributing to a pharmacare system that enriches very few. Now, because I don't want to end up like the Boeing boys, I'm going to digress slightly. Okay, so he makes a really good point here, and, and I have a lot to expand on it. And this point specifically is why I wanted to do this reaction. This is why I wanted to do this video. Um, some of these facilities in L.A. are massive. Um, there is no way they're getting rid of any pest infestations without reporting to some resorting to some pretty strong chemicals in most cases yeah and that's why this is super important to talk about um there is going to be huge problems when it comes to the poisons they would be required to use when it comes to trying to get rid of that amount of pests but if they're not using those and this pharmaceutical ceo is behind it uh one of the things that could allegedly be happening is something that we saw in the sugar industry and something we see with people with Munchausen syndrome and uh, or Munchausen by proxy. And allegedly what could maybe possibly be happening not to be accusatory and not to get sued is allegedly, hypothetically, possibly what could be going on is that this CEO bought samples legally to then send them in and have them tested. But instead of actually having them tested, um, what a lot of Munchausen by proxy people will do is they will go to a specific doctor or a web of doctors to find one that would be willing to either straight up lie or to more likely take a bribe to get results that they're looking for to then prescribe their child with medications that they don't need, therefore making them sicker than they were if they were sick at all and garnering a certain attention from the peers and people around them to fulfill their needs to push a certain message to the public. And uh, that's something you can see with uh, the Gypsy Rose documentary. Uh, this phenomenon can be explained pretty well. And if you look into the sugar industry, what they did was they would pay scientists to skew the numbers or push a propaganda to make it so that people would think that fat was the problem when it was really them knowing how bad sugar was for you, but pushing it as a better fuel source, a more efficient fuel source than fat. And people, um, that's where the misconception comes that if you eat high fat foods, you're going to get fat. When in fact, it's the fact that, at least in my culture, we overindulge in carbohydrates like sugar and uh, that's what contributes a lot of calories to our diet, making us fat because we have so much stored energy rather than the fat, which metabolizes and digests slower, being a more efficient uh, fuel source for the body. So that's one of those things where this phenomenon can be seen. And it looks like we could be seeing it again in the cannabis industry. But again, it could be change management. It could be a lot of terrible things. Um, but it also could just be that this guy 
uh, was able to find a lab that would take a bribe, and he bribed them into giving him faulty results. It's very possible. I'm not saying that's exactly what happened, uh, but it's very possible that that could have happened. One thing that I think is very important to ask is where is the outrage from the possibility of an article being written yeah, that just... defames our plant? Where Where's the outrage? Why aren't people upset? I'm scouring the same reference points that I was using to determine whether this article was real or not. And I don't see any outrage in regards to this kind of action by anyone. Was it malice? I'm not saying it was. But why aren't we asking questions? Why aren't we asking why would they do an article like this? Where's the outrage? Why aren't we screaming, hey, look at this blatant discrimination on our plant using no proof and a wad of lies? I don't. Okay, so pigeons, if you're watching this, uh, you do great input and make a lot of good points here. Um, I do, however, have a point to be countered with this. The reason the public won't ask questions about these kinds of things and the reason people are getting outraged about pesticides being in our cannabis and studies coming back extremely dirty at dangerous levels in our flour and our concentrates and everything when it comes to dispensaries, um, the studies that are showing that could possibly maybe lies. But when it comes to the American industry, um, I feel like in most cases we already knew. Yeah, that's that's fair. But um, when it comes to the American industry where most of this stuff is coming from, we have a lot of corrupt people that own businesses that have no problem killing hundreds of thousands of people to make millions of dollars. And the American public, when they react to things, they will take the article, they will read the study numbers, and since it says study by science lab, we tend to trust that. Why? Because we feel like we should be able to. Is that the case? Solemnly. It is very rare um, that you cannot trust um, scientific test results. However, when you don't look into things and you don't know who the test results are, were made from you don't know who the samples were submitted from which until your video i had no idea about that situation and how much of it could possibly have been a lie uh the la times just finally reported on it uh but with that level of volume and inspect you can expect some bad apples at least um okay nimbus that's very possible but at the same time the independent studies came back clean, uh, so it's very possible that we're not facing that issue. But when the American public reacts to things, we will take things at face value and run with it. And we'll say, look at these evil corporations, we legalized dispensaries, and now they're poisoning us, giving us brain damage, giving us seizures. Um, they are controlling the public to ingest more poison. The reason we don't ask a lot of questions is because that has happened time and time again. I mean, literally in time again. I mean, literally think about it. We had had propaganda since like the 80s and 90s that cereal is a good breakfast. That cereal is high quality part of a balanced breakfast when in fact it is basically eating candy in milk. Like we are far gone. Uh, a lot of the times from what we should know, and that is common sense when it comes to diet, obviously processed puffs that are basically powdered sugar should not be ingested as frequently as we do. But we do it anyway, because we are highly propagandized. And one of the things we're propagandized by is that if a test result comes out, there's no possible fucking way that could have been altered by somebody. That's not a conclusion we normally jump to. Um, Again, he does make a lot of good points and has a lot of good insight, but this is one of the things I wanted to make a note on, is that everything is such a mess and is so, so controlled by money that it does not matter unless you read up on everything, and that's something that people rarely do. That's my basic point when it comes to all this. I just don't see it. 
I don't see it. And, you know, I, I, I don't know Elliot from a hole in the wall, but his response to having the product come back pot negative for pesticides is underwhelming. He, just a, a live stream I found with him making an off comment. Where's the passion in the videos about why they're doing an article like this defaming our products? I don't see it. And it kind of leads question. Did, did somebody pay him overnight? Did he get a visit from the men in black that came in and said, hey, these tests, you're asking too many questions. You need to change it up. Did someone, you know, Liam Neeson him? I, I, I don't know. He's quote unquote being educated. I'm getting educated. But I have more questions now than I did before. So where is the safe weed? Well, I got an answer for you. And it's in your house because you're home growing. You're taking care yeah, of your right. own supply. You are not reliant on other people. Now, of course, there are people that do rely on others to get a good, clean, quality supply. That's why I think people like Elliot do us a service by having this onus of responsibility put on themselves. It's weed for the people. The dispensary, the shelf has the power. They can say no to any product. They can say no to whatever they like. And as long as the product is turning out to be clean, it's in their best interests to keep pushing clean product to the people. Names are mentioned in this article. I don't know. I don't know, but something leads me to believe that the largest names are in their position because they've taken quality control seriously. But I pass the question off to you. Maybe this is just the wool over. So I, I agree with this. Um, if you have a quality, safe product, you're more likely to get a better um, fan base and um, customer base. But at the same time, the reason that the biggest names would be mentioned in this article is because they're the biggest targets. And it would really be hard to miss with a propaganda machine. Who else would you go for? Like if I was um, trying to defame a company and I wanted to go after a candy company, first name that comes to your head, Nestle. Not only are they Nestle, but now they also own Gerber. And if you wanted to defame a platform, you would go after someone like Nestle, who has done their own fair share of evil things in the past that I won't get into in this live stream, um, but they're not a super great company in my opinion, and they make a lot of bad calls <laughs> and uh, have a very low standard for a moral compass, but that's completely besides the point. But if I wanted to defame someone and I wanted to have test results sent in and I wanted to have them skewed to make people think they're dangerous, I would go after Nestle and I would send in samples of candy and I'd be like, look how actually inedible this stuff is and how much it can poison and kill you. Um, Nestle should be losing business. And in the meantime, I come up with something and sell something that's a lot more dangerous. But since you're so focused on Nestle being bad, my stuff kind of flies under the radar. So that's kind of how that phenomenon would work. Um, instead of going to cannabis in this case, they're going to pharmaceuticals. So I, I think this was a very good video to go over. And I think he made a lot of good points and had a lot of good insight. If you are not yet, dude, uh, go follow Pigeons420. Um, uh, he does a lot of um, good content and whatnot. And here are the receipts that I asked for permission. Once it's on YouTube, it's there for the world to critique. Uh, I think he has a very good um, outlook on uh, outlook on the uh, public and also fair use. I appreciate him for uh, letting me react to this video, but I just kind of wanted to go over it and uh, let you guys know kind of my theories behind everything that's going on and maybe.